Hi all, I've been emphasising five main things in the King's Crusher Cafe at ChessCube and I thought I'd do a, a sort of PowerPoint presentation using actually Google Docs and so I've, I've created five slides. Now these things I think work together and of course if you're tired one day you know you're going to lose anyway whatever you do but I think it's important to be aware of, of these uh, you know chess tips well at least think about them for your own games I've really found them beneficial personally uh, you know I've come to the conclusions that these these are actually quite effective ideas um, now the first one is what I call strategic crush which I have mentioned a lot in my live commentary videos and really uh, it's the slow moving targets uh, you know which provide uh, more fixed points for longer term plans so you know the opponent might have a weak d5 square so you might try and exchange off the light square bishops to try and exploit that get a knight to d5 so you can do lots of you know long term knight, knight maneuvers it, it affects you know which pieces to keep on and off um, you know things like that so I call that strategic crush but also you know king safety is kind of strategic because the king can't you know once it's uh, committed to castle somewhere you know you've got another fixed target so it's the fixed targets provide the longer term plans so this is my tip one uh, which kind of relates actually to this um, Alakine, Ali, Aliakin quotation that the master combines you know strategy with tactics so strategy is like um, for me it's, it's the slow moving targets of the position so that's my number one my number two I like the idea of using positional sacrifices just to emphasize things. Oops, I, I spelled emphasize wrong. Emphasize. Um, whoops, we'll go back. Um, uh, pardon me, take back. So, to emphasize things. So, okay, so you've got uh, trump cards like this say a bishop on b2 pointing down the diagonal. You might want to emphasize that diagonal by, you know, rook takes f6. Uh, so you've emphasized the power of the bishop then you know maybe knight d5 is like winning because you've got knight f6 after but any positional sack you know often it creates this conversation obviously it creates compensation but the compensation really seeks to emphasize uh, usually you know your trump cards in the position uh, so the classic like positional sack is like rook takes c3 in in the Sicilian dragon so you're fracturing the opponent's pawn structure more you might be emphasizing e4 pressure um, you know, I had a horrendous loss actually with Rook C3 recently in a live commentary video. But there's all sorts of positional sacks which I believe emphasize things. Recent 2700 uh, decisive games, I, I've seen this positional sack on F1 uh, where they get this pawn on C6. Two different games. One was uh, Magnus Carlsen, uh, he, he recently sacked, you know, a Rook on F1 uh, for a bishop. And also Kramnik um, against someone sacking a Rook on F1. And both, you know, they got a pawn for it and they were emphasizing um, other things in the position. I think really it's an important part of the toolkit not to cling on too much to material when material can be used to emphasize your trump cards. So that's tip two. So tip three, chess is hard work. I think, you know, the longer you've got, you've got to take account of the little details. So in the longer games, like, you know, two hours or the fee day, um, it's, there's a lot of work often you know to, to look at little details which the opponent may not have spotted and those really can affect the plans or destroy the opponent's plans or help you do your own plans better okay um, by the way I'm going to give you the link to this presentation after there's going to be a Google link okay so you can have a look at these slides and maybe I could pad them out later with with YouTube video examples but uh, so that's like the hard work, you know, the, the penetrating glance uh, Eliakin would have said. So you combine the, the big picture as a strategic crush with the penetrating gr glance, which is like the look at the tiny details. Number four, I really think this is an important idea that if you read a book like Nimsbitch, you don't get carried away with all these theoretical weaknesses in the position. You've got to be slightly cynical to say, you know, are your pieces really able to exploit a weakness? So really not just think of weaknesses, but the question of, you know, exploitability comes into it. So, you know, you look at a position, you scan it, you think, oh, there's seven different weaknesses here. You know, double pawns over here, isolate pawn over there. Um, maybe a weak, you know, trapped in bishop over there. But which ones are actually exploitable? So you really need to, to sort of factor in your own pieces exact position and the, the exact position of the opponent's pieces to put those weaknesses in the context then you end up instead of that list of seven there might only be one or two truly 
exploitable weaknesses. So I think that's a major tip um, I found when when losing a lot after reading my system. I thought, hang on, you know, exploitable weaknesses, not theoretical weaknesses. Um, my my last tip to think about is you know opening theory. You know, people you know learn tons and tons of opening theory. Get all these like videos on specific openings but really I, I really think you know as an amateur we should be getting these systems together you know uh, we haven't got loads and loads of time to learn all these games and keep up to date but if you create systems and you know what you're getting from your opening systems your trump cards then um, you know even some openings they might be controversial you know like the modern Benoni uh, just because it's not being used at GM level but you know it creates these potentially you know losing trump cards you've got e-file pressure which is potentially winning but also potentially losing at the same time because you've got the weak, weak d6 pawn but you know um things like the modern benoni and alakine defense were used by fisher successfully against baski in the 1972 match and we can't you know just follow the the gms you know the 2700 gms playing the slav because i think that will really dullify our chess you know each, at the amateur level and blitz online especially Every opening, you know, can create these potentially losing trump cards. And I say potentially losing because you can be relaxed about it. That you're saying you're getting something, but you're giving uh, something to the opponent. Um, so that's why you know I really like you know the elephant gambit. Even though I'm losing material, I'm getting a strong initiative, which is very important in blitz chess as well. Pressure and the initiative. Um, so yeah, think about controversial openings and systems as well. I think so. These are the five tips. Now a link to this presentation is here, um, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll put it in the description of this video. Okay, hope you enjoyed that, and um, thanks very much.